In today's video, we're going to test out whether we can carbonate some weird stuff using a soda stream. Guys, not long ago, we showed you that we had one of these fun soda stream fountains. They're good for putting carbonation into a liquid that doesn't have carbonation. And we said to let us know if there's anything you wanted us to try with it. We got some fun responses, so today we're trying a bunch of them out. As you can see here, we've got a good assortment of stuff. They range from the not terribly weird, like a Capri Sun, to the kind of weird milk and chocolate milk, to the very strange. Someone wanted us to carbonate a hot dog. I don't think you can carbonate a hot dog, and if you can, I really don't think you can carbonate a hot dog with a soda stream. But we'll give it a shot. Pretty straightforward. We're just gonna start filling the bottles and test if they work and see how carbonated we can get them. I'm gonna start off with milk now. Should you carbonate milk, even if it works? That's a different question. Pretty sure it used to actually be a beverage you could buy. Like I think carbonated milk was sold in stores, maybe still is in some places. Sounds like an awful idea to me. I don't want milk flavored soda and I love milk. Maybe that's why I don't want milk flavored soda is because I like it to just be milk, but we are going to see how well this works. All right, here goes. In my experience using this thing, it never gets quite as carbonated as if you had an actual like commercially carbonated beverage, but we are just gonna see if it works. So here goes. Oh, that sounded like it put a lot of milk bubbles into our machine. Oh, well it carbonated and now it's foaming up everywhere. I think I had too much milk in here. I don't wanna give this too much time to lose carbonation. I'm gonna try it straight from the bottle, then I'll also pour it into a cup. Mm. Oh, mm, yeah, that's fizzy milk. I don't like it, oh man. I think what's happening is when the carbon dioxide gets dissolved into the milk, it becomes very slightly acidic and my brain kind of interprets that as sour. Mm. If I poured that into a cup or a bowl of cereal in the morning, I would think that my milk had gone bad. Let's try it with chocolate milk though, see if it's any better. I think we're pretty good on the amount that we've tried to put in. Let's see if this one bubbles and spills over. Yep, there it goes. Chocolate milk foam. Chocolate milk does not like to be carbonated. You can see like where there's milk and where there's bubbles and it's mostly bubbles. I'm trying to drink down through the bubbles into the milk. That, it's fizzy. It has that same almost sour quality that the regular milk did. It's not as strong. I feel like it hasn't held as much of the carbonation. So something in chocolate milk makes it hold on to the CO2 a little bit less than the regular milk does. I don't dislike it as much as I disliked the carbonated regular milk. So while I would certainly choose non-carbonated chocolate milk over carbonated chocolate milk, I wouldn't object quite as strongly as I would to carbonated white milk. Still not my preference though. Next up, someone wanted us to do Jello, and I wasn't entirely sure what they meant, so I'm trying two things. First, I'm going to make a batch of Jello the box way, which is you add this powder to two cups of boiling water, and then you add two cups of cold water after it's all dissolved in, and then you let it sit for like four hours. What we're gonna do is we're gonna dissolve the Jello powder in the boiling water, then we're gonna add the cold water, and then we're going to pour all of that, the still liquid Jello, into a bottle before it has had time to set even a little bit. We're gonna try and carbonate it like that, then we'll pour it out of the bottle into a container and see when it sets, if it's still fizzy. Callie has made carbonated jello a couple different times already using dry ice. We're gonna try it with the soda stream and see if it works as well. Now for the moment that could get everything just irreversibly sticky. Oh, it's totally going to, look at the foam, it's climbing up. I'm looking for it. Oh, ah, ah. oh no. Like chocolate milk is one level of sticky, but sugary gelatin, that's a whole separate level. I'm gonna pour some off, taste it, see if it's carbonated. Oh yeah. It's not nearly so carbonated as say soda is when you open it but it is carbonated. Now, things tend to lose carbonation and not hold on to the CO2 as well when they're hot or warm. This was boiling water mixed with cold water. In the end, we ended up with just kind of warm water. It's probably 95 degrees Fahrenheit type of thing. So it's warm and that does cut down on how much the carbonation stays in it. We're gonna pour it off into a container, let it sit in the fridge and see if it's still fizzy after it all sets. 
Now, I said that I wasn't entirely sure what they meant about Jell-O, so I've got the Jell-O in the fridge that was liquid and I carbonated it, but we've also just got a Jell-O cup. I'm going to see if you can just carbonate pre-made Jell-O. Because as it turns out, there's not really any safety mechanism making sure you don't spray stuff out when the bottle's not there. So I'm just going to stick this down into the Jell-O and I'm gonna push the button. Ready? Huh. Doesn't even have to be under the surface. It'll still just shoot into it. So I've carbonated this as much as I think I reasonably can. I was just like stirring it around while pressing the button to see what, you know, get my best possible chance of getting any CO2 into it. Let's give it a taste. Black cherry flavored sugar-free Jello. Not my favorite snack. It's bad and not fizzy. So set Jello does not seem to carbonate very well. My next thing I was gonna try is drinkable yogurt, and I got something that is similar to drinkable yogurt. It doesn't actually say yogurt anywhere on here, so it probably doesn't qualify by some definition as yogurt, but we're gonna try it anyway. So I think it's just like a probiotic drink. Bubbly. A little bit of the bubbly. I really hope this machine is just designed to handle that, because otherwise I'm causing problems. Oh yeah, that's fizzy. Again, not incredibly fizzy, but it's got some of it in there. And this stuff is already kind of tart. It's got fruit flavoring, and so the, the sort of acid taste that gets put in from the carbon dioxide, it doesn't clash with it the way it does with milk and chocolate milk. It didn't absorb a ton of the carbonation. It's a very mild fizz, but what it did absorb, not bad. Next up is a Capri Sun, these little pouch drinks. And instead of pouring it into the bottle, my goal here is to just carbonate it directly into the pouch itself. There we go. Possible Capri Sun spraying throughout the entire studio in three, two, one. Oh, not too bad. I mean, it filled it and it is leaking. Right, definitely lost some volume here. It's picked up a little bit of it. I think the sealed container is pretty necessary, like to hold it under pressure. The fact that this is like so easy for all of the liquid to get out, it makes it taste like it was carbonated two days ago, and now it's just very, very flat. I think the bottle is actually an important part of this. Holding the pressure in, I think, does make a difference to how much is able to dissolve. If it were really important to you to have carbonated Capri Suns, I would say you'd have to pour them out into the bottle and carbonate it there. So does it work in the pouch? Not so much. Now I think it's time to move on to the next level of weird. We're gonna try and carbonate applesauce. I really want this one to work. And applesauce isn't quite as liquid as something, so I'm kind of just trying to shake it up a little bit more. So if it does carbonate at all, it gets evenly mixed throughout. Please don't bubble up with bubbly applesauce. Oh, oh it kind of is. The applesauce is fizzing. <laughs> well, there you go. Applesauce erupting out of the container. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. I cannot tell any difference between the applesauce that I did not carbonate and the applesauce I did carbonate. Wait, that bite I did. Okay, so there is a little bit. It's pretty mild and it might just be like the foam that was like coming up out of the container, but there is a little bit to it and it's pretty fun. I would actually enjoy it if it were like way more carbonated than that. And I suspect on an industrial scale, it could be done. Like I think that you could carbonate applesauce. It's also very possible that you could carbonate it better with like dry ice or something. Just letting it sit with the dry ice bubbling up through it for a while, it would be colder as well. I might have to revisit that just cause I like the idea of fizzy applesauce, but it's fine. Not as good as I was hoping. All right, next thing we're trying, old world style sauce. Yeah, we're gonna do tomato sauce here. See how this works out. Here goes. One didn't really seem to spill out at all, so that's a good sign. No hiss or fizz when I opened a bottle up. Doesn't bode really well for being carbonated. All right, tomato sauce, which I don't usually just eat by the spoonful. 
I'm getting no hint of it. All right, I'll do a side by side just to be sure. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference if you put both of them next to me and said which is which, I'd never pick it out. So tomato sauce, that's a no go. At this point, we have abandoned all hope of sanity and descended into total madness. Apparently now we're going to try to carbonate a hot dog. Now I'm gonna try and skewer this on the little nozzle and then I am going to put the bottle over it so we have the best chance of actually driving some of that carbonation down into the hot dog. Three, two, one. Oh, tore a hole right in the side of it immediately. Okay, I'm just gonna cut off a slice right near where the hole was because I know a lot of CO2 is being driven into that area. No, no, it did not carbonate it at all. It's not fizzy, it's not bubbly. It's just a hot dog that split open, sorry. Got one more. We are going to see if it's possible to carbonate eggs. And to do that, we're just gonna put eggs in this and fill it up as much as we can up to that line. And then we'll just try carbonating it. I'm not gonna test eating the raw eggs, but after I've given it a good effort, I'm gonna pour a little bit out into a pan, try and cook it and see if we have fizzy eggs. Why on earth would you want fizzy eggs in the first place? Do those look bubblier than normal? Yeah. They look bubblier than normal to me. That's flawless. They don't have to be good, they just have to be cooked. Approximately two eggs, gently scrambled, salt, pepper, and a healthy dose of carbon dioxide. Oh my goodness, they are. Like, I think that's legitimately fizzy. It's mild, and if you just quickly eat it, I don't detect anything. But if I take a bite and just hold it in my mouth a little bit, I think it's honestly fizzing. Yeah, actually. There was a, a section on like the left side of my tongue that was getting a little bit of like slight. That's weird and I don't recommend it, but apparently it's possible. All right, our jello has completely set at this point. I do think it's interesting looking at the surface of this one. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but you can kind of tell there's almost this grid pattern of spots where bubbles clearly rose up. And so I think that was the jello degassing a little bit, some of that carbon dioxide coming out. The question is whether any of it stuck behind to actually make the jello fizzy. Maybe fizzy jello. It's sort of like a, there, there's like maybe this hint of it as it dissolves, like there's little pops and it's kind of hard to tell like, oh, was that carbon dioxide popping or is that just regular bubbles in the jello popping? It's not like dramatically fizzy. I think Callie got much better results when she used the dry ice. This one is basically clean and clear on the bottom, whereas this one has quite a few bubbles stuck to the bottom. I'm trying to tell if those bubbles stuck to the bottom are maybe carbon dioxide bubbles. The very slight bubbling that I was talking about with this one, it does seem like there's maybe a bit more of it in this one, but again, it's not clear. You wouldn't just bite that and be like, oh, it's fizzy. Didn't really work out super well for that. So does this work for fizzy jello? I'm gonna say not really. Like if you made this for someone, they wouldn't really notice. So I think for that reason, I'm gonna say carbonating jello with the soda stream, not so great. Guys, that's it for today, but you know we've always got more to see. Click the box at the top to check out our most recent video, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.